For, for practice set exercise 12.12 .12 is reverse. We're going to write a recursive method called is reverse, and it's going to accept two strings as a parameter and return two if the two strings contain the same sequence of characters as each other but in opposite order and false otherwise. So we have all of this you can read as well, kind of detailing what we need to do. You can read that while I start this method header. It's going to be a public boolean is reverse. We are going to accept two strings. So I'll do string s1 and string s2. And that is our header. That's it. We want to assume that the strings passed are not null. So that's that's good. The first thing that we can do, the easiest thing that we can do before we get into any of this, all we need to do is compare the length. Like if they're not the same length, it's going to immediately quit. And that can resolve so many issues for us so quickly. So if our s1.length is not equal to our s2.length, we are just going to return false. Simple. Now, what do we want to do for this? We can continuously compare this to this by using the character at, and we'll do this by storing them in chars. So we char, and we'll call this c1 is equal to s1 dot, we can do char at, but we have to get the length. Another way to do this is character dot two lowercase and we're going to pass in s1 dot char at we could also do ignore case but we'll just do two lowercase and this is so that it doesn't it ignores the casing and that's important because it's telling us to in the instructions if it wasn't then and we wanted to include casing then we could just completely omit this part and do uh, the s1 dot char at a1 or s2 dot char at and that's pretty much it. I don't know why this is a1. That should be char at. So s1, but for our s2, remember, we want to compare the back. So we're going to do s2.length minus 1, because index is just the length minus 1. So those are how we would get those two characters. And now we just need to compare them. We want to return true if they are true. So we want to return if our c1 is equal to our c2, and we're going to continuously do this, right? We're going to continuously run through this and until we uh, hit our base case, which we'll code next for. So to hit our base case, we are going to have to make our string smaller and smaller. So that's where our recursion comes in. In our recursion, we're going to pass in s1 dot substring. So we are going to get a smaller string. We're going to pass in a smaller string. We're starting at index one. And so essentially what this is doing is it's going to pass in the string starting at index one all the way to the end. And for S2, we have to be a little bit more specific. We'll do substring. And then inside of here, we're going to start at the zeroth index. And then we're going to pass in the S2.length minus one. So we have to do the front and the back for this one. And that's pretty much it. We're going to run this all the way down. And if we get to the end, right, and I might be missing a parenthesis right here. There we go. So if we do get to the end and we know that our length is zero, then we return true, right? Because it hasn't um, returned false. If C1 is not equal to C2, it would return false. This is like an if else statement right here. A couple different ways to do if else statements. And now to handle our base case. So we're going to continuously run this all the way down to zero. If we press submit just from here, we're going to see that we have an out of bound, out of range when it hits zero. So we need to stop this at zero before this even hits any of this. We'll have an if statement and we'll say if our s1.length, we could do s2.length too, because remember they're the same length, but it doesn't matter. If our s1.length is equal to zero, we are just going to want to return true. And we can submit that from there. And that should pass 17 out of 17 tests. So this is the code that we're using to solve this practice exercise 12.12 .12 is reverse.